Up your shaft. I saw. This is the uh, 20th, 20th anniversary tour of Anal Cut. Is this uh, is this uh, quite a milestone for you? Yeah, it's um, we're doing it with the original lineup because um, we saw we do something like special for the fans. But we're only doing songs from the original band period from 1988 to 1990, so we're only doing shit. We're not doing any of the stuff later that had song titles or anything. We're showing everyone what original Blorecore sounds all about, you know. Is there is there any sort of release new release with this tour commemorating uh, the, the original lineup? We'll probably have a DVD out of them. Um, we got a 10th anniversary show which we have on video. We have a 20th anniversary show on video. We have all the videos from the 80s that we did. We're probably going to record some new record too and stuff like that. And um, probably, we'll probably we'll probably um, exploit it as much as possible. Nice, nice, nice. And uh, beyond the, beyond this particular uh, 20th anniversary tour, are you going to be getting together with the other guys and uh, doing any other material, or is it going to be you and some brand new guys? Um, me and Josh Martin are working on a Pentagon Love Part 2. And when we get a new drummer, we're going to, have, we're going to do the long awaited release, waiting out, wearing out our welcome by Anal Cunt, which is a whole bunch of like the typical Anal Cunt stuff, but it hasn't been recorded yet. Sweet. We also might do a record called Fucking A, which might be a total cock rock album, too. I'm not really sure about that. What did you say it was going to be called? Fucking A. Cock rock album. Well, a la like, uh, like, like uh, Billy Idol. Like and Buck, Buck Cherry, Cherry and Motley Crue. Oh, nice. Have you, are, you, are you down with the, uh, the, new, the new Buck Cherry? Are, are you, do you like, to like it as much as the older stuff? I don't really like Time Bomb. I saw him Broken Glass on 15, it was good, but um, the rest was pretty gay. Like, um, I didn't really like the first record that much, but I like, like the second record a real lot. Like, we used to like, um, like, like uh, in the 2001 tour, so do a bunch of crystal meth and close a bunch of liquor before I cranked that in the van before I went on stage, punching holes in the roof of the van and shit. And then when I toured Japan, like, it goes like a liter of whiskey to show a lot of crystal meth and crank Buck Cherry in my headphones like, before I went on stage. But, um, yeah, but after talking, like, that singer, he's fucking gay, and he says, oh, I don't drink anymore, I'm gay, and all that stuff. And, it's just kind of like a, it's kind of a disappointment. When I saw him last time. He didn't do any songs I liked. I only did one song. I saw him with Motley Crue recently. Motley Crue actually way better than them. I saw Motley Crue in '84 opening for Ozzy. They're way better back then, actually. But um, but anyway, Buck Cherry, I really, I have, I have kind of low hopes for the new records called Black Butterfly or something. Did you uh, did you suffer to uh, now you saw in Motley Crue? Did you have to suffer to uh, Papa Roach and Trapped? No, we got there right for Buck Cherry on. Um, so you uh, lucked out as far as that's concerned. Yeah, we have to see all the wigger bands, yeah. <laughs> now Motley Crue, you said that Motley, Motley Crue put on a great show, I would imagine. You know, I mean, they were decent. They weren't like they were when I saw them like fucking 25 years, 24, 25 years ago. But, but um, they did at least a bunch of songs I liked, which is good. You know, it wasn't like, it wasn't like, you know. When I was like 15, seeing him for the first time, and it was really cool. You know, was oh, for, like, sure. for me, after Shadow of the Devil, Motley Crue sort of lost interest for me. At what point did you lose interest in Motley Crue? Um, Shadow of the Devil. Did you, uh, after Shadow of the Devil or at Shadow of the Devil? Mm -hmm. Pretty much after Shadow of the Devil. Theater of Pain was like useless. And when they started wearing all that makeup, that faggy makeup and shit. Yeah, they're like um, wearing like fucking woman's clothes and shit like that. They like look, the Theater they, of Pain and all that shit. Yeah, they don't look tough or scary anymore. They just look like a bunch of gay hairdressers or something. It's really sad. Um, now, um, <clears throat> now, when it comes to politics, we have uh, Obama, Barack, and we also have uh, McCain. Do you, do you think it matters? I have no idea what the fuck's going on with the presidential election. I don't really give a shit, really. As long as um, I heard, before I heard about Barack, I don't really like him. But, um, I really don't know anything about them, so I can't really, I'm not really qualified to comment on him. But I prefer the Republican guy, whoever he is. Well, what was the last presidential election that you uh, that you were interested in? I voted for David Duke in the '92 uh, primaries. And then they ended up voting for George Bush Sr. like uh, in the presidential election, but he lost. So, <laughs> the last time I voted. Right on. Well, I, I can't really think of anything more to ask you than that. I'd like to thank you for your time. And uh, oh, there is one last thing. Um, people, now you are. You, you, last time we talked to you, you you were pretty motion. You were pretty. You seem pretty shaky, and now you seem 
pretty still, or maybe you like nervous or something, or maybe well, you. Um, well, I still like. Uh, I was in a coma like four years ago. I still probably like um trying to get back from together from that and shit. Plus, I was totally wasted last time I did the interview in this thing. So like um I've actually um been able to. Uh, as you can pretty much control my drinking for shows, like only drink like a certain amount so I can um, not fall down or not fucking be shaky or anything, it's just totally destroy every night, you know. And um, last time I was pretty much probably, pretty much probably useless at the show from, from what I can remember. I don't, know, I don't even remember doing the interview last time, so. Huh. Well, it's a good thing we taped it. Uh, w one last thing: w w what what is the what is the beef, or what was the beef between you and Chris Barnes? Mm, that's so fucking boring and long. I know it's a long time ago, but I don't know if fucking try talking about it. Like, um, mm, all right. Me and uh, Josh from Anaheim went to a six feet under show to uh, put out flyers looking for a drummer. We were heckling Chris uh, six feet under because they saw it, and, and, and um, and afterwards Chris Bond grabbed me. I'm like, I was like, oh, you want to fight? He's like, yeah. So let's go outside. And I was all happy. I turned my back and to walk outside of the front door, and I got jumped by five of his roadies, and, he, and um, I got hit by them. He didn't do anything at all. And then um, then I tried to get him to come out of his tour bus. Say, hey, do you want to fight, faggot? And he's like, um, he wouldn't come out. Then uh, a few years later, I saw him in Rhode Island, drove all the way to Rhode Island. Because I haven't played Boston since then. I drove all the way to Rhode Island to see them. And I was fucking heckling him on stage. And after the fifth song out of a 15 song set list, he ran off stage and hid in his tour bus. So I guess he's still afraid of me, I guess. So. <laughs> okay. Well, I, thanks, thanks for sharing that with us. I know that's a quite, that's a story that you probably shared a thousand times. Uh, probably you definitely clear that up on video. Thank you so much for your time, man, uh, and all on all the great music as well. We love Anal Cunt. Yeah, we have a new CD out called uh, Old Stuff Part Three. It's like stuff from like a whole bunch of unreleased stuff we did in '96, before the I Like It When You Die record, and. Um, and yeah, the stuff in the split with split with the uh, Ranch Brothers and a whole bunch of cover songs we've done for various cover records and shit. We have it on uh, until actually we have a new record label called WickedSickRecords.com. <laughs> That's a record label I started in 1988. We have that going. We have um, all kinds of shit for sale on that. It's WickedSickRecords.com. All small letters. Cool. And uh, we could probably just go to your MySpace as well and link from there to that as well, right? I don't know how to do links. I'm not like Mr. Computer or anything, so you can just um, probably see a list on there somewhere. But We'll find you. If people want anal cunt merchandise, they'll get it. That's for damn sure. Yeah, just go to WickedSickRecords.com. We have a um, limited edition of 100 full... I mean, it's another band called Full Blown AIDS, too. And, um, F uh, full Blown AIDS. Yeah. And I uh, play guitar and sing in that. And have uh, the Anal Con Old Stuff Part 3. We're selling both of those CDs here. The hand numbered copies of 100 each. We mean, and then um, we're going to do the generic pressing of 1,000 when they get home. But, um, but right now, if you're at the show or, or if you don't want to be Jewish and buy it, you can get one. Um, uh, there's only 100 made, the hand numbered and shit. And, uh, well. Sounds like a good deal. And it's obviously hand numbered authentic. Yep. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for your time, Seth, man.